In the previous videos, we talked about metrics for classification and regression tasks, which both are part of the supervised learning paradigm. But as we will also cover some methods for unsupervised learning in this course, you might wonder now, how can I evaluate the quality of my clustering model? In the last module, you heard about the differences of supervised and unsupervised learning, so you might also see an issue with the existing metrics that we talked about. Can you think of the core problem which makes us unable to use confusion metric scores and others? If you were thinking about the fact that we require a ground truth for our dataset, then you are absolutely correct. In all of the previously mentioned metrics, we are dependent on having access to true labels of our data. But in the unsupervised setting, we unfortunately do not have them. So what can we do? Let's first start by briefly recapping clustering, which will be used in this course as core example for unsupervised learning. The idea behind clustering is that our algorithm tries to group individual data points together into so-called clusters. This can be done using a variety of different algorithms, which you will hear more about in a later model of this course. Ideally, our clusters are dense and well separated. But what does this mean? Let's look at an example. Here you see a small dataset where each bubble represents an individual data point. In this case, finding good clusters is rather easy. Can you find a good solution? Let me draw a good set of clusters. A cluster being dense means that the data points within this cluster are close together, tight and cozy. The further they are apart, the less dense the cluster is. Well, separated means that each cluster is distinct to each other, meaning that they are not too close to other clusters or even overlapping. Okay, but why do we need all of this when talking about evaluation metrics? Well, simply put, as we do not have access to true labels, we will use this information of dense and well separate clusters to evaluate our model. Our key metrics in this case are the intra-cluster distance as well as the inter-cluster distance. The intra-cluster distance measures the density of each cluster by looking at the distances of data points within a given cluster. There are several different variations of this. The complete diameter distance measures the farthest distance between two data points in a cluster, so in a way the widest diameter in the given cluster. This metric only looks at the distance between two data points, so if those two happen to be quite far apart, but the rest is very dense, it might give a bad picture. Different to this, you can also use the average diameter distance. In this case, you simply calculate the distance between all pairs of data points and then calculate the mean of that. Somewhat similar to this, the centroid diameter distance computes the distance of all data points to the center point of the cluster and then, once again, averages them. Now, we have been using the term distance quite often in this context, but how do you actually calculate the distance? In the real world, it would be quite easy by, for example, just measuring how far apart one person stands from another, or the straight line distance between two cities, or the time in seconds between two events. With data, especially for higher dimensional data, it becomes less intuitive. However, there exist many different distances which have already been defined, such as the Euclidean distance and the Manhattan distance. You can, of course, also define your own distance, but you need to be careful and make sure it fulfills all formal properties linked to the definition of a distance. For more details, you can refer to the script below this video. Okay, so far we discussed how to measure density using intra-cluster metrics. With inter-cluster metrics, we will look more towards the notion of being well separated. Those metrics will look at distances between two or more clusters, rather than looking inside a single cluster. The single linkage distance measures the closest distance between two given clusters. This is achieved by computing the distance of all data point pairs, where one is from the first cluster and the other from the second, and taking the minimum of that. Similar to this, the complete or maximum linkage distance looks at the furthest distance between clusters by taking the maximum. And of course, we can also use the center points again and just simply calculate their distance using the central linkage distance. A bit different is the average linkage distance. In this case, you will have to compute the distance for all data point pairs where, once again, one point is from one cluster and the other point from the second cluster. After computing all of the distances, simply take the mean. Having metrics for both intra-cluster and inter-cluster, there exists a variety of different metrics that take ratios of those two. One of the more popular one is the so-called silhouette score, or silhouette coefficient. This method calculates values in a range of minus 1 and plus 1 for each data sample using the mean intra-cluster distance, or also average diameter the distance, and the mean nearest cluster distance. The mean nearest cluster distance calculates the average linkage distance for a given data point to the points of the closest cluster. Once those two metrics are computed, the silhouette score is calculated by first subtracting the mean intra-cluster distance from the nearest cluster distance, and then dividing this by the bigger value of those two. A value of minus 1 tells you that your data point is in a wrong cluster, 
Zero means that there is some overlap of clusters, and a plus one means that your clusters are in a good shape, meaning dense and well separated. This can also be visualized quite nicely using the silhouette plot, as you can see now as an example. It is important to note, however, that different clustering algorithms can create dense or less dense clusters just by design of the algorithm. This means that while the silhouette score is a very useful metric to compare different models of the same algorithm, it can provide a distorted result when comparing different algorithms. And of course, there are many, many more metrics available depending on a dataset and use case, which I will leave for you to discover on your own.